Good evening, councillors and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just a reminder of all, tonight's uh, corporate scrutiny meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded onto YouTube later. Uh, so far, we have apologies received from uh, Councillor Marie Bailey and Councillor Bain. Uh, do we have any further apologies? Excellent, thank you. Fair enough, uh, we've also got apologies from portfolio order, thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is minutes of the previous meeting, which was the 7th of February 2024. Do I have a mover, please? It's been moved by Councillor, I forgot your surname, do apologise. Thank you, Councillor Smith, it's not a popular surname. <laughs> do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Doyle, all those in favour? Those are carried, thank you. And apologies, Councillor Smith, I don't know where my mind went then. Item three on our agenda is any declarations of interest. There are none, thank you. Item four is update from chair. Obviously, um, a briefing notice has been circulated tonight about the Assure system. Um, I'm happy to take any questions or comments on that, but it's just a briefing note to assure us that actually they're still on progress to make sure the system works correctly as we required. I'll take that as read, thank you. Item five is responses to reports of the Corporate Scrutiny Committee. There are none for this meeting. Item six, consideration of matters referred to Corporate Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. We have none for this meeting. Item seven, uh, it's been circulated with the agenda, is the Corporate Scrutiny Annual Report. This is, of course, the report of the work we've undertaken this year and any recommendations we've sent to Cabinet or Council. Uh, I've taken the time to, time to peruse it. I thank the officers for pulling it together on my behalf. Uh, I didn't make any changes to it. I'm going to be perfectly honest because I thought it was excellently written. Thank you very much. Uh, so obviously it's before us this evening to approve as our annual report as the Corporate Scrutiny Committee for 23-24. Happy to take any questions or comments. I, I personally believe it's pretty exact of the work we've done. Okay, I'll take a mover. I'll uh, move by Councillor Price, seconded by Councillor Claymore. All those in favour? I've got a sneaking suspicion this is going to be a quick meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Item eight on our agenda is the leaseholders insurance policy. Um, obviously, um, it's been bouncing around for a little bit of a while. Uh, Councillor John Wade contacted me and asked me to get this onto an agenda for us to look at. Obviously, a briefing note has been circulated. Um, it's with us, with us this evening. It's basically a question to ask scrutiny. Do we feel this is worth some scrutiny or are we comfortable with the briefing note that's before us? I'm prepared to open to question or comments. If it would be easier, could I possibly ask one of the officers if you just do a very brief, I know it's more of a financial matter, any chance just a brief introduction of how the process works? I do know it's more finance than housing. I'll just possibly say to you, Mr. Barnes, just a rough idea of how the process works, if possible. Uh, we don't we don't need an apology mr barnes honestly uh, as i fundamentally accept it is a matter for the council's finance team rather than the housing team so thank you for that obviously the briefing note is before us um obviously there has been obviously there has been a, a little bit of an increase in the cost of leaseholder insurance where those that brought their own council house and the insurance they have to take out in the last year 
if you look over the course of a few years, it has sort of yo-yoed up and down, as tends to happen in the insurance industry. Uh, the re obviously, the briefing note is with, before us. Councillor Claymore, did you want to come in? Yeah, if I remember right, um, Councillor Wade's issue was why the leaseholders couldn't obtain their own insurance. Um, and it's clear that that's been addressed, addressed here um, by saying that they're not able to do that because of the reasons stated in here. So um, I don't know if that covers what Councillor Wade wanted um, want the information for. Thank you, Councillor Claymore. As you rightly say, within the briefing note, there are Acts of Parliament, obviously, on how the Council has to handle leaseholder issues. I think we've had leaseholder issues here quite a few times this year. Obviously, we've had some, some success with one of them. I think this is an issue where there is a complicated uh, backstory, for want of a better term, where obviously leaseholder insurance falls out of access legislation, how the Council must handle it, and how leaseholders insure their pot their property is a matter of national legislation and very difficult for us as a council to change it or amend it or take any suffrage from it for want of a better term any further questions or comments thank you chair um just the one thing at the bottom where it just basically says about the you know comment was that was not unreasonable it'd been nice if there was a bit more meat to that you know what i'm saying so there's an example of like the because he just says not profitable, I could say the market was reasonable, and I don't have to give any, you know, any data because basically they've just written it down. It'd be nice if there's a bit more to it than that, just saying, yeah, it was a reasonable increase. You know, if there was actually some examples of it, that's all. Chair, it's a fair question. Uh, can I ask the officer to take a note? Uh, feedback to finance to brief the committee back, obviously for a bit more information on that particular question. Yeah, absolutely. is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. Councillor Price. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, it, it's really difficult to do anything with this. We, I, I don't really know the background of it. Um, I've only just got the briefing note, and there's, there's no officers here that can really answer the questions. It would be nice to have some officers present to be able to ask some questions and potentially <clears throat> get a bit more background as to why councillor wade asked for it to to come to committee in the first place uh, i feel we're doing it a disservice by just having a quick discussion about it this evening um it probably is something that requires some proper scrutiny but without the uh tools and correct information and officers available I, i'd find that quite difficult to do that's a fair point, Councillor Price. Uh, would you like me to ask the office if we can sneak a meeting in quickly some point in April <laughs> where, where the diary might allow us some, somewhere just to perhaps... Um, we, we could potentially do it as a quick working group. Um, obviously, but those with an interest, potentially, if we could ask the finance team for a meeting and really dig into it. And we, we could, at worst case, recommend it to the corporate scrutiny meeting early next year to delve into. I'd, I'd be happy with either of them groups, yeah. either early early next year or working group. I think would be, would be a good idea. I've got Councillor Maycock, who's a good-looking man, whispering in my ear. Uh, uh, basically, we should, we should, group. yeah, we should probably do both. So, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, if, if committee will allow me to take that away, um, basically, I'll speak with officers, see if we can slip a quick working group in obviously before the end of the municipal year, get us a meeting with finance, those of us are interested. Um, I'll touch it base with all of you offline, drop an email out. Anybody interested in attending that working group, we'll quickly pull one together, delve into some details, ask some questions, and we'll see if we need to recommend it into next year. As Councillor Maycock correctly just whispered in my ear, might be a good idea. So should we take that one away and see what we can do? Everybody comfortable? Excellent. which takes us to item nine. Obviously, uh, we recently had a working group <coughs> meeting to look into um, housing repairs working. Um, those that were present at the working group uh, a couple of weeks ago will know that actually housing repairs is too big a topic. 
to do in one session or one meeting. So we pulled out the next thing we'd like to look at is voids, at which point I'd really love Councillor Dean and Councillor Clark to join us because they were on the working group. If you want to take a seat and join in the meeting, steal a microphone from somewhere, I'll come up the top end here. Don't... <laughs> if you want to steal a microphone. Obviously, the working group on housing repairs was bigger than just corporate scrutiny, we've said. So we have invited councillors from other committees to join us, and Councillor Dean, the chairman of ISAG, and obviously leader of the opposition, and Councillor Clark, who I believe is the um, shadow member for housing, uh, obviously can join us this evening to discuss, obviously, this matter. Uh, we did send some questions to... Um, Mr. Weston and Mr. Barnes uh, that came out of the meeting. I don't know if Mr. Weston, you want to give us a brief update on how far you've got on the questions that were circulated, and then obviously we can open up for some discussion. Thank you. So, obviously, within the period we've had, there is some information that we still need to collate, and I have suggested to uh, Councillor Cook that we should be able to get all of that together uh, by the 12th of April. I think the problem we've got is we've had people on leave and with the Easter period we'll have more people on leave uh, so it's it's predominantly going to be the sort of the data related stuff what I can go through is some of the process stuff because that's easier to sort of answer without sort of having to sort of do too much digging into uh, into the systems so if you if you want me to just go through your questions and sort of update on those for you then sorry, sorry. Uh, just update committee obviously these were the questions that came out of the working group i just put them straight through to mr weston so we'll run through the questions if anybody that was on the working group that even thinks anything missing throw out the questions we can get them this evening or we can continue into another working group please mr weston no, thank you so first question was delays and quality of work yes we are we are aware of some of issues with uh, standard of cleaning on voids and also some issues around the general quality of repairs on voids uh, there is a fur question further down on snagging, so it's probably best to just cover it off on that one. Uh, in terms of delays, we do know that there's been some delays around uh, issuing certificates for properties, so that would be like your gas and electric certificates. Clearly, we can't let properties without those being in place, uh, so th you know th th there will be some delays on that. Uh, we've also, I think, experienced sort of some fairly high cost voids, and again, I'll, I've got some outline initial data on the, on the void costings on that one. Uh, time taken loss of rent, rental income to, due to delays that's the bit I need some more time on that one uh, one of the key people who can provide that information was on leave last week so we've not been able to pull that one together question for yourselves I suppose really is in terms of what, what time period do you want covered on that I think the concern was obviously the longer it takes to actually clear a void and re-let it through choice based lettings how much rent are we losing per week um, I mean, what, what's the hit to the yeah. HRA? I think is no, the I, question. I'm thinking. How much are we lost in there? That's probably what, what time period? Of Twelve months. I think per void. I mean, what what do we lose per void as we don't let? You know, is it three weeks? Is it ten weeks? Is it? Right. If you can give us a table that says this is the amount we're losing as, okay. as it escalates. Yeah. About to your knowledge, Mr. Weston, yeah. and obviously you're yeah, no, I was just thinking if you want just, like just give us an idea. If something takes six months, what rent have we lost? Yeah. If something takes three months, what rent have yeah. we lost? So, so just yeah. give us a flavour of no, what. No, that, that, that's fine. What, what income has been lost to the HRA by a property just yeah. sat on let and boarded up? What, what I will say will be notional information because quite clearly, whilst we can say if it was delayed due to property being handed over, I can give you that. What I can't say is how long it sat void because there's no demand for it. Yeah. So there'll, there'll be two lots of information there uh, because that, that sort of sits with that voids and allocations. So whilst we might have a void where we've done the work complete and handed over, if there, is, if there are delays in letting because either someone is allocated and isn't ready to move in, those will be different. So I can give the data around. So, so as part of our next step, would it might be worth getting Mrs. from Stafford to come into that conversation? Possibly, as well? yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So no, that's fine. So like I say, so that, that I'm aiming to get that for the 12th of April on that information. In terms of the standard process, yes, there's a key to key process. And that involves the contractor for their elements of the works. There's close uh conversations with the voids and allocations team so that the, they should know when properties are coming back and due to handovers they can do their process uh, <laughs> and sort of the project officers contractor and the voids and allocations team meet on a regular basis to discuss those uh, I think we all recognize there's probably some more work to be done around sort of developing those relationships between the various teams to make sure that's a, a smooth process uh, and works properly for us but there is a process there and again I'll look to 
in the final report, I'll look to include sort of just the in, insert that into it as an appendix for you. There's a question around sort of do Equans have the void contract? Uh, so, so heard a rumour of the three contractors. We we have two contractors working for us. Equans are the prime contract responsible for delivery of void works. They do the day to day and some planned works. Weights only do planned works. So Equans do all of the plan uh, all of the voids for us. There have been some discussions with Weights around perhaps doing some of the high cost voids where they are moving more into a planned works nature. That hasn't happened yet, but that's something we're, we're looking at with them because, again, I think one of the things we're recognising that some of the some of the voids are high cost because they are moving more into a planned mini refurb more than just a void. Uh, that sort of so that there may be some scope there, and that by spreading that work out, it may actually speed things up for us on that front. Uh, largely because I think Equans are geared up to deliver voids in turnover, not so much the big plan jobs. Uh, in terms of KPIs on voids, again, period for that, 12 months sufficient, or do you want longer? That's the coming that quickly. Obviously, it's something we raise at the working group, which is, okay, please, Councillor Dean. Starting, starting point would have been 12 months. That's, that's fine. Let's see, yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. I can give you the 23, 24. Fine, that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, I, did, I did pull some, together some very quick... Uh, information on costings of voids over the period of time. Uh, quite interesting reading on that. Again, I've done it over, in fact, I've done it since the start of the contract. But in, in terms of sort of the sub 500 pound voids, it's, it's fairly low at 23 in the current year. 501 to 2,598. 2,501 to 5,000 were 49. 5,000 plus were 80, so, so quite a lot of those. And of that 80, 25 were over 10,000. So you can see the sort of our, our void costs are quite high. Uh, now, again, I have got some pictures that I'll put into the report, but one of the reasons for that is we're dealing with an awful lot of properties that are handed back to us in, in poor condition. And an awful lot of it is, dare I say, home improvements, uh, unauthorised home improvements, which of course we have to take out and put right uh, before we let the property uh, so I think I hate to say it but I think Covid perhaps people had a bit too much time on their hands and were doing work in properties that seems to be uh, the view on that one but we, we've seen a lot of that unfortunately but I'll, like I, said, I will share some pictures on that because I think some of them are quite interesting uh, but that you know it is we are seeing some quite high costs in there and I haven't put it in here, but I think there were a couple of them, close to 50,000. But those will have been structural type uh, works on those. So, you know, it's it's not, uh, you know, not, not the normal. Uh, priority order, voids undertaken? No, not as such. They tend to be done in date order simply because that's the way the contract is set up and that's the way KPIs are measured. However, the voids and allocations team will speak up if they need a void handed over more quickly, uh, perhaps if they've got something where there's a special needs case in terms of uh, someone uh, fleeing domestic violence or a disability, disability case where they need someone rehoused quickly. So they will work with the contractor to try and prioritise those, but there's no, there's no sort of specific priority that says we'll do one and two beds first and then three bed houses second or anything like that. Uh, that tends to be sort of just, they, they come in in date or and they just roll through. Uh, unless there's particularly a particular reason why uh, delays available to sub, uh, due to availability of subcontractors. Y yes, there have been some delays uh, from availability of staff and resources, uh, but I think the biggest delay, as I said, sort of in the previous comment, is around the actual cost and quality of the stuff that's coming back to us uh, prior to it, sort of uh, prior to even starting the works in there. We've been working with Equans. They have made some management changes with the aim of trying to improve service across the board. Uh, and we are working, I think, as we said in sort of the previous meeting, on a service improvement plan, which we're looking to take to the Housing and Homelessness Advisory Board in April for their initial view. Uh, I won't say it'll be fully developed by then. It'll, you know, there'll be a fair bit of work to be done on it, but it'll pick up a lot of these sorts of things as part of that process. Uh, quality checking of work, quality controls. A council project officer inspects all voids at handover. 
uh, and they also check the invoices against the works that were done to make sure that we're being only really paying for what to, what we've, what's actually been done in the property. So every void will be checked. And I suppose the next one on from that was the snagging process. There's not a snagging report as such, but what the what the project officer will do is email any details of snagging items over to the contractor to identify what needs to be done to put it right. For minor snagging items, if there's not much in the property, they'll accept a photograph from the contractor to say it's been done. If there are more major snagging items, they'll actually go back out and re-inspect it prior to handing over. So they will sort of check all of that one. Uh, I think there was a question raised about a tenant survey, and I think we've said on that one, that's not available at this point. Uh, and then I think the other one was... Sorry, sorry Mr. Weston, sorry. Yeah, just to say, the um, working group did say, obviously, the tenant survey has been undertaken because of the new regime of how we end housing and in, you know, government inspection. Uh, the data hasn't been fully collated yet. It, we've been promised as soon as it is fully collated, uh, sorry, collated, it will become here first. Not so much here first, but it will come instantly here. If that makes sense. I think question 11 follows on from that, which is about in the regulation stuff, which is the social housing regulation, which I'm assuming was the tenant satisfaction measure side of stuff that you were looking at on that one. So that will follow through on that one as well. Uh, offhand, I can't remember what's in there for voids on that one, because uh, it's predominantly around repairs on that one, <coughs> on the voids. Uh, and then there's the leaseholder stuff that you've had. So that covers that. Like I say, the aim is to get you a, a proper written report for the 12th of April that covers response to that gives you the stat and like I say I suppose some quality data around sort of you know uh, pictures and stuff like that to give you a feel for what what the voids look like when they're coming over to us and as I say we are working on a service improvement plan with the contractor uh, and like that that we're aiming to get to that with the tenants advisory board in April so that they they can have that first sight of that for us thank you chair thank you very much Mr Weston Obviously, a whistle-stop tour of the questions raised by the working group around voids. Obviously, a lot of work is now going in from officers to pull together every question we've asked, as you've heard, a full and comprehensive report. I am now going to definitely lean on our colleague. To the right. <laughs> if you can find us some space in the diary for a, a working group and another corporate scrutiny meeting before the change in the municipal year, I'm pretty sure we'd all be grateful, just so we can kind of just before we change year and obviously some of us are up for election some of us are not uh, be a new set of councillors next year perhaps a new controlling group we don't know yet that's up to the people of Tamworth but obviously let's get as much of this work we, we've done as we can before the election not a political issue as I see it I think we all want to see the best from our our council housing and the stock that's available to the residents of Tamworth so if we can look to stand and squeeze some things in the diary you don't have to do it this evening <laughs> but I'm going to I'm going to put some pressure on, I'm going to put your pressure on the family somewhere yeah I, can, yeah I think after the 12th yeah so. obviously after the 12th yeah. yes and if we can have a not the 13th because I think members yeah. would like to read it as well uh, Councillor Dean thank you if, if I can just reiterate one of our biggest issues was around the timings wasn't it taken and as probably everybody knows because I keep banging on about it both houses next door to me have gone through this process and it has taken months and, you know, we've talked about the cost to the council of not having the rent there, but there's also a personal cost to the person who's waiting to go in who may be desperate for somewhere. The, the thing that did worry me in Mr Weston's um, talk there was, do we actually have houses that there are no demand for, that we can't let? Um, we have a very small number, and it tends to be sheltered housing. Um, so, so by and large, we, we don't have a, a hard to let to let um, hard to let issues, but with a very small number of properties, uh, it can be difficult to let them. And obviously, that's where we have a flexible sort of approach to the allocations process. Thank you. Obviously, a quick question for myself while we're here. Obviously, we asked the question about no company carries every skill set. So, obviously, some things have to be subcontracted. Do we have within our contract a time scale that to work with, or do we have to accept market, market conditions? I know that's a complicated question, which got very. I'll leave that there. No, no it's essentially the contract sets time frames on the jobs based on value. So the contract says between certain value ranges, you have a certain number of days to complete the works. 
until you get onto the high value stuff, which is tends to be more by negotiation, depending on the nature of the work. So if you've got a property where the structural work's to be done, clearly that's not going to be done within sort of twenty days or whatever it is, you know. So I think the the the, the, the lowest values I think are sub five hundred, I wanna say, would be like three days turnaround on those. Uh, but there are times. So, so sorry, pulling pull it out there then. A previous tenant has broken the U-bend on the toilet and it's leaking. They've got three days to turn that around. Is the sort of thing you're sort of saying. Yeah. For, for, for voids, there are so there are there's a value attached to it that says once it's been scheduled, if it's between value zero and X, it's three days. If it's between that, it's five days or ten days. And I think the highest value one's about twenty. I can put that in the final report for you because we've got all of that. That's perfect. Yeah. It, like, but like I say, there are there are te set time scales on on those that we can monitor against. But it's based on the value of the works of the void. Like I said, there'll always be exceptions to that if there are things that are perhaps out of the normal in, in the void. Any further questions or comments? Uh, go on, Councillor Maker. It was just on some of the properties where people have done their own DIY. I mean, is there any stipulation in, in the tenancy to say if you are going to do any DIY works, you're to put right before leaving and if they do leave is there any cost passed on to them when they go to wherever they're going yeah no, thanks for that yeah the, there's a requirement for tenants to seek permission if they want to do any alterations to the property uh, we try not to give permission where we can help it for anything that's a major in nature because obviously it's not ideal for uh, having that because you have to put it right at the end of it uh, there are arrangements around recharge, and again, that will be in the final report. I've asked for that piece of information. I know that we do have a recharge policy uh, that covers both repair works where tenants have damaged something whilst they're remaining the property and at the end of a void. Collection rates, I will cover it in the report, but I suspect they're probably not particularly good, uh, particularly where tenants move out of the uh, Tamworth Borough Council properties altogether because there's very little uh, scope to, to pursue them for it. And with recharges, you can't add them to the rent arrears figure because of the way they're, the way they're structured. So uh, I can cover that off in terms of the report, in terms of the, the amount we've actually issued as recharges and the percentages recovered. But I suspect it won't be a particularly high percentage because it typically hasn't been. Any further questions or comments at this point? Or should we send the working group away for the report on the 12th of April and try and squeeze another meeting in before we have an election? Everybody comfortable with that? You don't realise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I'll uh, thank our two officers for their attendance and their continued work. And really, Mr. Weston has kept me utterly updated on the research he's been doing to answer our questions. So I really appreciate the efforts. Thank you. Uh, Obviously, welcome to stay or welcome to go enjoy your evening. I think you're absolutely correct. Okay, I'll take us to item 10 on our agenda, which is review of the forward plan to see if there are any items to be added to corporate scrutiny for the next municipal year. Has anybody got anything on the forward plan they'd like us to recommend for next year's committee to look at? I personally don't. I suspect we'll be sending stuff post the two working groups, so let's set, let that play out. But anything for this evening? Okay. Item 11, which is obviously Corporate Scrutiny Committee Work Plan and Action Log. I think we've got no further action other than what we've discussed this evening because I think we've worked through it, if the officer is comfortable. Yeah. And I think that's the end of our agenda. At which point, I'm hoping to squeeze another meeting in before we do. If I don't, I'd like to thank everybody for their work this year. Thank you so much. I think we have been productive. I think we've got a lot of recommendations to Cabinet, positively received from Cabinet. I think there's been a lot of good cross-party work, you know it should be. So hopefully one more before the end of the year. If not, thank you all. And good evening. Sure, sure.